Tamiya Hunter 30 TE-F model. Um, brand new kit. Lower half is a brand new tool from the Murder 2 kit that came out earlier this year. Um, and as well as that, um, it's an entirely new turret and upper hull. Um, marking options for this are two Eastern Front variants. The one at the top of the box is 7 Panzer Division, Russia 1941 through 2, and I don't remember off the top of my head uh, what the bottom uh, set is. So, it's, I mean, it's a Tamiya kit, so you can kind of expect what's going to be in there. Um, I've never seen this sheet before, but I imagine the majority of people are going to know what it is. It's how to remove things from the sprues, um, how to do your metal parts and things like that. So it's nice that it's in there, but I won't really, I'm not really spending too much time looking at it. The instructions are normal Tamiya standard. Um, the interesting part here is step 20. The turret ring for the commander's cupola is nine parts, um, four here, four here, and a ninth one here, not including the top hatch. Um, I thought that was an interesting way to do it. Um, everything else though is very standard um, to me. Uh, you know, put the tracks on, then you put the running skirts on, things like that. Um, very nicely printed, it's good quality paper, as as you would expect from Timia's kits. I don't think I've ever had a particularly badly printed set of instructions from them. Um, so that's nice. Um, another uh, Timia standard is the background information card here, um, obviously in Japanese, but there is also uh, English there um, and a nice schematic so you can kind of get a feel for what everything is um, as opposed to just having the sprue numbers. Um, in total, I believe the kit um, is around about six different sprues, um, which are very nicely molded in grey styrene. We'll get on to them in a second. Um, first thing that we want to look at is the decals and the photo etch. This kit does have a small front of photo etch with the first the decals, decals, whatever, I don't care. Uh, two marking options, uh, obviously the uh, 522 and 112 with various Balkan Kreuz um, and whatnot to go along with them. Um, I mean, the paper's thin, it doesn't feel like it's too thick, um, the, the print quality is very nice on them. Um, the numbers are, are grouped, they're not individual, so just be careful when you're putting them on and they'll be, they'll be more than adequate for purpose. Uh, foot wedge fret here, my screen's gone off so I can't see what I'm doing. Foot wedge fret here um, for the, the intake, um, it's very similar to the one from the Academy Hetzer, but it's thinner. It looks a little bit crisper and cleaner. Um, it's not really showing. That should help. You can see there the kind of uh, detail, but it's very nice. Um, I mean, this this kit was uh, fifty five dollars, which is a lot for a kit of so few parts. I bought a Tiger for forty the other week, um, but. That tiger's a few years old and it's not a Tamiya, so I guess it kind of depends how you feel. Um, this is the fret for the lower hull. This is where the foot wedge attach is just up here. Um, as you can see, no bathtub style, but it does look very rigid. You got the lower part 
two sides or rear plate. Uh, this is the top part of the rear plate. Um, so it does look fairly sturdy from what I've seen. You've got some tools down at the bottom here as well. Everything's very nice. I'm not seeing any flash or excessive mold lines. I don't mind the occasional mold line. Um, but when they get excessive, like some of the trumpeter kits, like the KV2, that takes a bit far. This is the uh, the running boards, the upper hull, uh, toolboxes, and the crew member. Again, very nice. The rivet detail up here is very crisp. It doesn't, it's not soft, at least. It looks very sharp. Uh, the crewman does have a mold seam down his leg here that I can see, and down the other leg here. Um, but that doesn't seem to have translated too much onto the other um parts that i'm looking at here um so just the crewman's kind of got the odd mold seam but i would rather have a, a shave too much plastic on him than a shave too little i definitely prefer a bit a bit of time with a sanding stick as opposed to uh trying to fill things but it's personal preference i'm sure there's somebody that will be the opposite um and will let me know um, turret here, uh, relatively straightforward, the lower, upper, the sides, um, and then the guns right here, it looks like, yep, don't know if you can see, uh, right here, but it is slide molded, so you don't need to drill it out, it's kind of becoming the standard, um, which is nice, because it doesn't seem like it's too hard to do. Um, we've got four parts for the cupola here that I mentioned. I've not seen the other four on any of my uh, frames. I may have overlooked them slightly. Um, and then just bits for the, the gun and whatnot down here. Uh, running gear, uh, road wheels, slight mold seam down the middle. But depending on who you ask, rubber wheels had more line down the middle of them anyway. Um, a few extra track lengths here and a bow machine gun. This frame there's actually two of, so I'm not going to discuss them both because it's kind of superfluous. Um, got the IR light here, obviously, drive wheel, return roller. Got a couple of helmets here. You know, some, these are half jerry cans. Um, and just little bits and bobs like that. Suspension arms. The really nice thing here, though, is the top run of tracks, which you can see is already shaped. So you got your top run already done, and they're already uh, pre sagged, I would call it which will help you line everything else up. And there's leaf springs here as well, which is quite nice. Uh, suspension arms and whatnot. You can see the helmets are nicely hollowed out. So whichever way up. I want you to throw them. Whichever way you want you to turn them would look quite adequate, I think. Do need to add straps for them. There's no uh, no chin straps in the kit. And then last set is the uh, is the tracks here. There's two of this frame. Um, long length for the bottom, and then individuals and various. They look very crisp. They do not have lightning holes in them. In the guide horn, I apologize, to that right off the screen. Um, we don't have any lightning holes in them. The box art doesn't have lightning holes, so I'm going to presume that's correct. That's something I need to look up to know. Um, but again, very nice, very crisp. A new, uh, a new mold. It's marked on at 2019. Uh, Tamiya there, so. They're very nice as well. Um, and that's it.
And the way the other, the other one is the 19th Panzer. We get that five, five two two. Um, this one is one one two. So a couple of options there um, as to how you want to paint it, but definitely it looks like it's going to be a good little kit. Yeah, we'll see how it goes and I'll let you all know. Bye-bye.